Hey guys, hope you are doing well. Hey, I'm excited to share something with you that is coming up in a few weeks. I don't know when you're watching this. Things stay on the internet forever, but I'm recording this the middle of April 2023, and I have a, a new book coming out at the end of the month. It's a book called Quantum Life. The subtitle is Awakening to the Kingdom of God Within You. Uh, this will be available on Amazon at the end of the month if you'll stay tuned in to my page here, you'll, you'll know when it's released. I'll let you know. I'm excited about this because it's something that I've been studying for a lot of years, and I won't repeat everything I've said on here in the past, but you've heard me talk about how that I began studying quantum mechanics just sort of as a hobby. I know that sounds like a weird hobby, but you know, quantum mechanics is a deep subject, but like any subject, you can skim the surface and still pick up enough nuggets of gold, even without going plumbing the depths and going into the the more complicated stuff. And so I did that. For years I've done that. And I began to see similarities between what science teaches in the realm of quantum science versus the old school science that we grew up with, scientific materialism, Darwinianism, Newtonian, closed mechanistic universe. Now modern science says, no, 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 no. You guys missed the boat with all of that. Quantum science has only been around, well, it's been around forever, but it's begun, begun to emerge and be understood since the early 20th century. And uh, it's, it's compatible with our faith. Old school science, it's Darwin over here, Christ over here, at odds with each other. New science, quantum science, very complementary to our faith. So anyway, I began to see these similarities, and finally I began to realize it's not just similarities, they coincide. And so I, I studied it, and I've been teaching it for a while, and now I've written a book about it, and the book is called Quantum Life. And the book is, is people ask me, why aren't you teaching grace? It is grace you read the book, you'll see what I'm saying. You know, Paul the Apostle wrote a lot of epistles, epistles, letters to the churches, telling them how to live in grace. Well, that's what this book is going to be. It's a book that will teach you how to live in grace and how to live inside the kingdom of God. The chapter titles, I'll, read, I'll, I'll give you the chapter titles so you'll know what the book's about. Chapter one, a new world is appearing. And there I talk about this quantum world that is becoming uh, more and more known and recognized by many of us as being compatible and not only compatible with, but an expression of how to live our life in Christ inside the kingdom of God. Chapter two is called See Differently, from potentiality to actuality, and it's about how we need to learn to see through the eyes of Christ. Chapter three, Believe Differently, the power of intention. And that is a chapter that really deals with faith from a scientific standpoint. Chapter four, Speak Differently, transformation through conversation. And that has to do with the power of the way we talk. And uh, the Bible says a lot about that. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, the scripture says. And I get into a lot of that in chapter four in the book. Chapter five is think differently. And that's about rewiring your brain. Science calls it neuroplasticity, but the scripture calls it being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then finally, chapter six, just six chapters, is called quantum living is kingdom living. And that's where I really get into the... Uh, um, the, the, the explanation and the description of what it looks like to live this life inside Christ. All right, let me read from the book, okay? Let me read you a little bit from the book. Listen to this. I'm reading. Quantum science is different from the language of the church, but it speaks the same message. It speaks of a world governed by eternal energy. To believers, that's known as the kingdom of God or Christ. It's not out there in some distant place. The kingdom of God is among you, Jesus said. It looks different from dead religion, contaminated by the linear logic of scientific materialism. It's unlike the material world that we've known, and the way we function there is different. But when we learn the culture, we discover a pathway to a better life and world than humanity has understood until now. We discover a way of grace, where goodness pours into our lives in ways we haven't seen or imagined. All right, let me skip on to another chapter. The chapter called See Differently. Listen, it's incredible how science shows you that by the simple act of observation, you influence outcomes. This isn't to suggest that you have absolute control over everything. However, you do have tremendous influence over co-creating your reality. The whole matter of seeing things differently has biblical roots. God told Abraham, I'll give you everything you can see. There's something powerful about focused intention. Let's be clear that when we're discussing focused intention, we discuss where you set your focus. It's natural that we look where we expect something to happen 
And by the mere act of focusing there, we influence what happens. Attention equals intention. Once you understand the results of this experiment called the double slit experiment that I describe in the book, and its spiritual implications for your life, your entire perspective will be transformed. Initially, it'll be unsettling, but it'll change how you look at life and the world. In the same way that scientific materialists were taken aback by their scientific discoveries, that is to say, let me pause, when old school science caught up with quantum science, they said, oh, wow, this is shocking. In the same way, many Christ followers today struggle to believe that how we function inside the kingdom of God is so different from what legalistic religion has taught us. The outdated science says that the world operates like a machine where one thing leads to another and then another and another. Now we know that quantum science doesn't follow those old rules. The same is true in the matters of our faith. The outdated old covenant religion of the past said that our lives are based on certain things leading to other things. You know, if you study your Bible enough or pray enough or live morally enough or do countless other things, God will bless you and good things will happen. In the same way that scientific materialists were taken back, many today struggle to function inside the kingdom of God. And I go on and talk about how that it's because they're <laughs> unable or unwilling to accept grace as the protocol for life inside the kingdom of God. This book is a book that blends the scientific voice of, of, modern, of modern science, quantum mechanics, with the biblical truth. Now, before anybody posts in the comments and says, well, why don't you just teach Jesus Christ? <laughs> I am teaching Jesus Christ. Did you know God is, did you know God is multilingual? I mean, the scripture says that the heavens declare the glory of God, right? The, the heavens declare the glory of God. Well, if that's true, then God speaks through astronomy, correct? <laughs> There's just one discipline. God speaks through a lot of things. Have you ever heard God speak to you through a song, through the words of another person? I mean, come on. The voice of God is, and I wrote about this in the book, the voice of God is too loud to be shut up inside a building or even the Bible. I'm not diminishing the Bible, but I'm saying I've been to China where the, having a Bible is illegal. And those people have heard the voice of God. I mean, back before there was a Bible, did people hear God speak? Of course. I'm, again, I'm not diminishing the Bible, but what I'm saying to you is that quantum science is telling you some of the same things the Bible has told you all along, but listen to this. Quantum science is telling you how it works. I mean, the disciples asked Jesus about some of those quantum phenomena in his life and ministry called miracles. How do you do that, they asked him. And Jesus said, I love the Aramaic version of the Bible in plain English. It says, Jesus said to them, uh, I would tell you, but you wouldn't be able to grasp it now. You wouldn't be able to bear it, some translations say. How do you do that, they said to Jesus. He said, I could, I could tell you, but you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't understand it. But then Jesus said, the Spirit would guide us into all truth in the days to come. Well, what do you know? Ding, ding, ding. Here we are. Here we are. I mean, just like that 400-year period between the Old and New Testament, the people had come a long way in their understanding. Well, we've gone 2,000 years since the New Testament, and thank you, God. He's given us a deeper insight of himself and what the scripture teaches, and he's doing it through science. And that really irritates those people whose, whose identity is all wrapped up in their religion because the, they can't believe God would have the audacity to speak outside the pulpit or beyond the Bible. Science, come on. Are you compromising? Are you leaving the message? No, no. Jesus said things like, consider the lilies of the field. Oh, really? Are you going to tell me that God speaks through botany instead of the Old Testament Torah? <laughs> You get my point? God speaks in a lot of ways, and this book is one I'm excited to share with you because this book, Quantum Life, coming out the end of April, is going to uh, show you some ways that God speaks that you might not have considered before. Stay, stay on my page. Continue to check back here, and uh, I'll let you know when the book goes live. Right now, the target date, we're going to, let me put it this way. It's not up to us. We're going to release it on Amazon. The publisher will release it on Amazon on April 28, but it can take anywhere from 24 to 72 hours for Amazon to, you know, make it go live. So I'll let you know. Stay tuned. And uh, I'll say more about this, in fact, next week.
So I'll see you there. Have a good week.